Okay, why are we uh, way ahead on step 70? Well, what happened was, after I was through uploading yesterday's episode, which took a lot longer to upload than I thought it was going to, uh, I, I thought, you know, we did not have a really good look at this detailing kit. Well, we looked at the propellers. But that's really the, the only thing we really looked at was the propellers. We didn't look at the barrels properly, or we didn't uh, look at these blast bags properly, or, or anything properly, just the propellers. So I'm thinking, I want to I see, have a good look. And so uh, I got to thinking that, well, maybe uh, somebody else would like to see up close. For instance, uh, uh, my friend Jim Steen, he, he, I don't know if he's got this kit, but he might be thinking of maybe getting it. But he, if he doesn't get to see up close what you get, uh, he doesn't really know. So let's look at some of these parts up close and see how, how will they fit in the, in the turret. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a turret. And uh, I was curious as to what it would have been like had we used the, the, uh, the barrels that came with the kit. And they would have been, it would have been pretty nice. It would, it would have been okay. Um, they go something like this. It's almost identical to the way the Bismarck was. Anyway, you get the idea. The barrels would, would stick through here. There go on something like that. Anyway, well, we won't be using these. And uh, <laughs> I have to say, to my chagrin, you might say, that I uh, at first thought, oh my goodness, the, these barrels are the wrong size. Maybe these are for the six inch guns. And I thought, well, that can't be. And then I realized what was happening because, because normally these would be quite a ways inside the turret. Then there would be the blast bags. Well, yeah, if you put the blast bags on the end of these, then everything's going to match up. Anyway, let's, let's stop talking here. Oh, one more thing that I found. <laughs> I was trying to fit these together and and they were working pretty good uh, for the most part except on turrets that had this little thing here I, I don't know if you can see that or not but it's kind of kind of camfered right there or, or sort of a bit of an angle okay so the number 11 has that and the number 10 doesn't so these, these things fit perfectly in the number 10, but they won't fit in the number 11. And I'm thinking, well, these things are all the same. You know, they're all number sixes, every single one. They're identical. So I think, well, now, now what do you do? Well, I'm looking ahead a little bit here. I'll find it. It says, cut, remove. So they want you to cut the corners off. Okay, so I thought, well, I guess uh, that's the way they want it done. I was wondering why didn't they mold it like this in the first place, but uh, that's all right. You know, I know how to cut corners. Now, as far as these sprues go, they're they're all identical. So we'll just nip the parts off of uh, off of one, just just enough for what we need. Actually, we just need one blast bag and and maybe uh, one uh, anti aircraft assembly so we can see if these things will fit in it um, and I know I'm getting way ahead here but I'm just kind of curious I want to see how this is going to go okay now being as we're going to be using the detailing kit I'm 99.9% .9 sure nothing goes inside here so I think we're probably safe to, to glue the base on oh what's that hair doing on there now Okay. It shouldn't take very much to hold it on there. Just put a bit of pressure on it for a few seconds and that way if there's any little burrs or anything that's holding it apart it'll 
but I can see by looking at it right now it's a practically a perfect fit. Yeah, looks good to me. Okay, now let's uh, cut off uh, our blast bag and see how that's going to fit in the hole there. I had just nipped this one off and I was thinking these are probably all the same, all eight of them. And then I thought maybe not and then I had presence of mind to check. Sure enough, number two, number one. So um, after I get this one nipped off I'm pretty sure I can find a place to put a one on it. Yeah. Now these two pieces on the other hand are both number three. Well, at least I can count to two. A few moments ago when I was going through the manual here to try and find the plastic counterpart to these little barrels here, and it's uh, G19, which is these right here. And here's the base and so on. Maybe, maybe I'll just nip some of these parts off and, and see what we would have had if we didn't use these bar brass barrels. But anyway, what I was noticing is that unlike the Bismarck, the hood does not have any what you would call a medium-sized turret. This, these were the larger ones, there's four of these, and then it immediately drops down to something that looks like this, which was open in the back. And those poor guys operating this gun had absolutely no protection from splinters or shrapnel or whatever you call it wherever you come from uh yeah it was just open in the back there they uh in any kind of battle they would probably be dropping like flies but you know it's, it could be like one of the viewers mentioned quite a while ago that that humans were expendable whereas machinery wasn't that's a pretty sad commentary on our society isn't it anyway uh let's try and get one of these nipped off here and see how different are they from these. We'll put the macro lens on have a nice close look. Okay, here we go with G19. Okay, we need a G18. A G10. clean these up later. Uh, a G3. These are so obvious we don't need to look for the numbers. Can't miss them. Uh, what else do we need here? A G30. I'm surprised uh, that this isn't photo etch. This part right here was photo etch on the Bismarck. Okay, where is it now? I couldn't see it for looking at it. Okay, G30. Is there anything else we need here? Oh, we need... Uh, G29 and G32. All right. Well, here's a here's a 29. And the 32 is right there. I don't think I need to number these. They're pretty obvious which is which. Okay, I do believe we have all the pieces now. It says make seven. We'll just make up one 
and we won't actually glue it together. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up the parts now and uh, then we'll take a nice close look at the barrels and see how they compare. Okay, this piece right here, number three, is supposed to replace this part right here. I'm not really seeing any greater detail uh, in this one than in this one. The molding looks to be about the same quality. Now I know that there is a two there, but that was for this part over here, remember? One, two, both of these are number three. I'll put the macro lens on and we'll do a close comparison after I get this cleaned up. Now I put these on my rotator and I was going to spin them around. The idea being is we could do a comparison, but then I realized that this one here was not being held at the same angle as this one. So I'm thinking that what we should try to do here is see if we can get the barrels in place. This is the first time I'm trying it, so If it's not too bad, at least there's room for glue. Okay, I think that's all right. Okay, now we'll put them on the rotator. We'll do a better comparison of the barrels in a minute. All I want to do right now is see, does there seem to be any difference in molding quality it's almost like they came out of the same mold, except that uh, one had the barrels cut off and holes drilled and the other didn't. I'm, I'm not noticing too much difference. In fact, I'm not really noticing, well, may, maybe some some difference on the top of the one that has the, the, the uh, brass barrels. It could be that the detailing is slightly more crisp. You notice that there's there's little boxes just just right on the on the top here that I'm almost touching. I don't want to knock this thing over. Uh, it it seems like maybe the the edge is a little bit more crisp, but maybe I'm just looking for something. Anyway, I'll leave it up to you. Either way, they're pretty good. As for the barrels, first we'll do it with the lighting from behind. I want to be careful that I don't get too opinionated here. I want you to be able to make up your own mind. In other words, if you've got the hood, are you going to want to get this detailing kit? Well, you make up your own mind if you want it or not. I'm going to try and just show it to you as, uh, as good as possible. We haven't even looked at the main guns yet, and it's already in the afternoon. Um, yeah, we've got, to get out, we've got to get on here. I wanted to do some painting, and it doesn't look like we're going to be able to. And then there was something else on the propellers I wanted to show you yet, too. Once again, I've got to remind you that you are seeing these a whole lot better than if you were holding them in your hand. Unless, of course, you were using a magnifying glass, then you might see them about this good. Um, I'm noticing that the barrels do not go all the way into the breech, uh, the brass barrels, that is. This is probably why Tony sent along the drill bits. He did say something to that effect in his note. I better reread the note. I'm pretty sure that these barrels, yes, they're metal, but they're not brass. I think they're aluminum. They're very light. You'd almost think they were plastic when you're handling them. So they must be aluminum. It doesn't matter because they're going to be painted anyway, right? Um, now for the blast bags, I, I did not take the flashing off of the, off of the seam, uh, but I did take it off of the ends, you know, like where I wrote the two. 
Uh, but uh, you can sort of envision what it would be like with with the uh, uh, you know with the flashing removed and everything. Um, okay, so this. Let's see if I can get a hold of it now. Can I pick it up? Okay, so this is going to go in here. It's a pretty tight fit. I, I probably will use glue, but I could tell I probably wouldn't need it. Not that you, you know, it's you know, not like you can't get it out again, but it, it's, it's a pretty tight fit, which is a good thing. Okay, so I'll put the macro lens on and, and uh, we'll zoom right in on the blast bag you can, and you can see the, you know, the quality of it. And you can just sort of envision what it would look like when, if it was painted. And as far as the barrel goes, well, there's really not a whole lot to look at. Um, well, we'll look at the end there. Okay, now you will remember these are numbered number one and number two. Well, number two won't fit properly in this side here. It'll be a little bit crooked. So, uh, it means that it has to go in this side here. All right. Now, in order to get the, uh, the uh, thing to fit nice and tight all the way around, it the barrel the barrel is going to be almost perfectly horizontal which is probably the way I would have had it anyway um, yeah so uh, it, the, the, the blast bags do seem to fit really well in in the turret I have no complaint about that that's for sure now I think the best way for me to show you these props properly is to have them on the rotator here and uh, you'll notice that they probably are going to take a little bit of filing, but not near as much filing as the plastic ones, if I remember. Plastic ones were almost, you might say, blunt on the edge. Okay, so there's that one. That one looks pretty good. Now, oh, this one here looks a little rough on the edge there. Captain hit a rock. Okay, we can fix that. Now this last one, you're going to notice that there's a little bit of damage on the tip of this one right here. It looks like my 18 horsepower Johnson outboard at the end of the summer when I wasn't watching where I was going. But I think I can pound that out. In fact, I'm sure I can. I'll have to be careful, though, that I don't uh, crack it when I pound it out. But it won't, this won't be hard. It's not a big deal. Anyway, that's our props. They're not brass. I believe they're aluminum. Or maybe some kind of white metal, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So that's it for the props. As you can see, we're back to the rotator. And here's the plan. And... This was uh, recommended by one of the viewers. Now what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the dead spots while I'm positioning these on the tweezers. So it's, it's actually not going as fast as what it looks like here because I want them positioned so that the pin side is down
Okay. That was just four more to go. Now I do believe these are spaced far enough apart that the airbrush should be able to, you know, like when it comes spraying at an angle like this, for instance, this one won't block this one, if you know what I mean. And of course they'll be rotating. I think this is going to work. Maybe I'll just poke them down like that. I don't think they'll stick to my finger, but the tape will. Okay. Now I know we did do this already before, but I must have removed it because, okay. I got sawdust on that one. Let's get rid of that if we can. And one more. Okay, you know what folks, I'm going to have to call it quits for today's episode. We don't have time to do any painting. But I don't see any reason why we won't be able to tomorrow. There's very little preparation that I have to do here to, you know, to paint. These things are going to be okay. You know, even if they wobble just a little bit, it doesn't matter. Okay, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.